Hey, what's going on there, folks? It is the Earthmaster here. Welcome back to another update on this Thursday morning, February 1st, 2024. Can't believe it's already February. Uh, it is about 11.19 a.m. here, California time, and latest activity looks like a 3.3 .3 earthquake into the area of California. Let's see what's going on here first. Looks like it's coming in from the uh, EMSC model. Not showing up yet on the USGS map. Uh, really not seeing that showing up on any of the seismograph stations here, although we are seeing continued earthquake activity out there on the big island of Hawaii. Let's go ahead and jump into that here real quick and show you guys what is going on. Quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up here overnight and this morning as well. This has been kind of an ongoing situation out here with the earthquake activity. And um, no eruption as of yet. I'm a little shocked that we have not seen the eruption take place. Um, seriously, I thought it was going to be by uh, this morning time period, but uh, I guess not. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Look at this uh, earthquake activity. It's ramping up out here. We got well over 400 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. If we go back the last seven days or so, we're coming up on close to a thousand earthquakes there across the area of Kilauea Volcano. Now, this is probably only a sample of what has been taking place out here. There's been, uh, I believe the wording there in their last update was uh, about 1400 earthquakes since the uh, 27th there. So about four days or uh, yeah, about four days ago, um, they've seen that many. So tap on everything, top on everything that we've seen overnight and this morning so far, we're probably coming up on close to about 2000 earthquakes. Uh, I know the USGS map only showing this number, but uh, they're not including all of the earthquakes that are taking place here, including the little tiny ones. All right. So, yeah, uh, still situated here south of the Caldera region, more out here towards the southwest rift zone. Um, <clears throat> and this trail of activity is following uh, a rift zone out here. You can kind of see it uh, on this layout map here. Here's Kilauea Volcano, Mauna Loa over here to the west. East Rift Zone. This is kind of where we've seen that Lanali Estates activity back in 2018. Uh, but the area of interest right now is kind of down, you know, if you could draw a cross section right here. Well, this is a cross section, but uh, extended out here just to the east slightly of the Southwest Rift Zone. We're seeing that uh, uh, earthquake activity follow that, um, that region. And it has been active uh, historically out here. Uh, I'll show you guys a map here in a minute. I want to bring up the latest information statement here, which is put out from last night. Uh, they haven't put anything out yet this morning. Uh, this is from last night. Just a real quick overview. Uh, they mentioned that the summit region remains heightened and dynamic. Uh, talking about the increasing of earthquake activity there in the last couple days. Uh, about 1,400 earthquakes since 9 a.m. on Saturday, January 27th. So 1,400 earthquakes. You could probably add on, you know, a few more hundred from last night and this morning. Uh, the tilt meters out there continuing to show some variables indicating that magma is uh, rolling around the surface down there, uh, the subsurface. Uh, let's go over here real quick and check out uh, a little bit closer view of the area uh, the tilt meter here it looks like it's offline i'm not for sure where it went to uh, but they they no longer show that so i'm going to go to a bookmark here real quick and show you guys the uwe tilt and as you can see here yeah this is on a little bit different uh, uh this looks a lot different but it looks like they've adjusted the uh the settings over here either way yesterday and today seeing a huge drop in the um, inflation activity. So we got some magma adjustment going on here in the last day or so. Definitely keep an eye on that. Um, okay, now back here to this model. I'm going to get rid of a few stations here real quick and just kind of show you guys where this activity is taking place here. Uh, these are certain areas in the past, Mauna Loa over here, Kilauea Volcano, East Rift Zone, Southwest Rift Zone. Uh, it's following that Southwest Rift Zone of 1951 uh, to 1982. 
Uh, that includes the old 1974 uh, vents out here as well. Um, I'm still leaning towards the potential of fissure activity opening up out here. That's where most of our earthquake activity has been um, last night and this morning. We see little clusters up here, little clusters down uh, south. Uh, but it seems like it's migrating this area a little bit further stretching out uh, overnight and this morning. So that would be a key indicator that we're looking at maybe some eruptive fissure activity out here. Uh, and, then, and then again, it could potentially be just south of the Caldera region. Now, I know they mentioned that they don't see any indication that it would happen just south of the Caldera region. But I, I mean, earthquake activity and, and deformation uh, showing some migration here. I, I, I think that... Uh, I really think that we could see that open up out here. Of course, I'm not in charge of USGS. I'm just basing my observation here on um, scientific study and past events and um, the current situation that we're dealing with here in terms of earthquake activity. So yeah, there's the older events, um, 1983 to 2018 there brings up the uh, lava lake area i don't know if we're going to see that key up again that's where the past couple eruptions have taken place here have been filling up this lava lake area the summit region but i i'm leaning more towards out here folks um i believe we're going to see that happen very soon i mean it has to we're getting so much earthquake activity out here um a lot going on just below the surface uh, so we'll continue to watch that um for some activity there's the East Rift Zone out here, you know, and they they seen some back in night from these dates as well, 1951 and 1982. Um, there is the uh, Linalia States eruption, 2018, out there on the East Rift Zone. Not for sure we're going to see that. Uh, you know, it's more confined. It seems like over here, just south southwest Rift Zone area. Uh, the seismograph stations out here still, well, they're working. Last night they weren't working. I don't know if they did some type of network change or network adjustment. Uh, but they are up and running appropriately, properly, and uh, currently 1600 UTC time. That's going to match up with my, well, see here what's going on. I got about 1900 UTC time. Is this one still, are these still kind of... A little off here or what? That one's not working, obviously. We got all this earthquake activity. Um, yeah, that's a little weird here. A couple hours off. But uh, either way, um, looking at the data here still shows quite a bit of earthquake activity uh, in that region. I'm trying to find a little bit closer station here to all the, to all the mix of uh, activity. A lot. Yeah, there's still a lot going on here, folks, uh, with that earthquake activity. And again, it's one of those things where I just got to watch it and see uh, how it plays out. So I don't know. What is what is the current Hawaii time out there? Is it really? Uh, let me see here. And 927. So these are technically off by about um, four hours. So they stopped reporting once again. It should match uh, the UTC time, no matter what, where you're at in the world, should match the, uh, you know, it, it's a universal time. It should match mine up here, 1930. And it's not, it's not 545 in the morning over there. It's 927 uh, AM. So it looks like these seismograph stations have been pulled once again. Uh, and that's not good because I need to be uh, need to be watching these graphs closely. Um, and the only thing I you know we we can watch is obviously the data coming in here live uh, to the Hot Caves Hawaii station on the live stream. And there's still quite a bit of earthquake activity. This station, Hot Caves, sits uh, down south just uh, a little bit. I think it's in between Pahala and the uh, Kilauea Summit region, right right about here. So it's not specifically right underneath all of this earthquake activity, but it is picking it up. Uh, it does pick up uh, the twos and threes, and some of the smaller ones are just uh, barely visible here, but there's still a lot of earthquake activity going on here. And uh, the question is of when, when is it gonna happen? 
Let's go check out the webcams here. Um, Summit region. Quick glance out there. Looks like a beautiful day in Hawaii. Blue clear skies. We got blue clear skies here uh, right now. Picked up, goodness, picked up two inches of rain yesterday and overnight here at my house. Uh, got a decent chance for some thunderstorms as well today. But uh, there's a summit region out here. Uh, this is some lens flare. Notice the sun right here. These are not magical orbs, you know, floating in the air or Planet X or any lava here at the surface. These are lens flares directly lined up with the sun out here. It just, that's the way it is that lens flares happen. Um, but far as any visible sign of any activity up here at the summit region, I don't see it. It doesn't look increased. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, the volcanic gases have been fairly stable here over the last couple months since the eruption back in, two, in uh, uh, last year in September where we did have a couple fissure activity open up. And those are probably the older um, regions there from back in September. But it doesn't look, uh, doesn't look changed at all. Here's a little bit closer view, it looks like, of an area. Uh, here is the upper southwest rift zone looking northwest um i don't see any abnormal activity out there here's another view of the east rim of the caldera oh it's from the east rim of the caldera so uh yeah i really not seen anything out there yet as uh, far as eruptive activity goes but uh, it's i believe it's getting close folks uh, you know when a volcano like that really stirs up uh, earthquake activity and uh, you know like i say look at it it's kind of migrating out here further further and further south i just wish all the tilt meter stations were uh, working out here uh, but they're not some are some you know, UWE stations offline. That's UWE seismograph station, though. I need tilt meters. Uh, this one here showed a huge uptick yesterday. And that uh, that's going to be this one right here, right? Which one was that? Yeah, there's a couple in here. SDH. So that one showed a, a huge uptick yesterday, beginning with all the earthquake activity, right? A little bit of a downgrade here today as far as deflation. Um, but the UWE station up here has been pressurized. And yesterday, this is the area that went down um, when we had all that earthquake activity here. I'm still seeing it. So going down up here, uh, this did go up, way up. Now it's going, now it's going down in terms of deflation. Um, does that mean the magma's... Um, you know, further down south here, I, I kind of potentially uh, lean in towards that. There's no, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of uh, tilt meter stations out there. That one's not working. Uh, you'd think there would be more tilt meters out here, right? But uh, just not seeing it. So we'll have to watch it. Super dynamic situation. I think it's a little bit more complex than uh, what most people believe here. Uh, again, I'm leaning towards um, the activity possibly opening up here, southwest rift zone, or maybe potentially just a little bit further uh, in this area here on this side. That's my observation. That's my forecast. I believe that's going to uh, happen here soon. But look at this. We're getting activity all over the place here, not only confined to the region of the southwest rift zone here, but scattered out and about in a huge area. Even kind of going out here towards the Loihi Seamount. <clears throat> that was a 2.0. <coughs> excuse me. 5.9 kilometers deep. Uh, uh, pomegranate juice. Some good stuff. Missy Mimi's uh, bought me that. and I, I do enjoy some pomegranate juice on occasion. <clears throat> so. Let me see what these uh, depths of these earthquakes are. 17 kilometers, 5 kilometers there. Very shallow for that quake. Very shallow for that one. Fairly deep. Decent depth there for as well for those uh, Mauna Loa quakes. But, you know, there's a... I think we're getting a, a fairly decent push of magma from below. 
Uh, I think we're getting a, a more of a an inflow right now, and this happens. It seems like it happens a lot when it's quiet across the general uh, Western Pacific or around the Pacific Ring of Fire. You know, the Western Pacific uh, areas here um, across China and uh, the states. It, it's really quiet. We haven't really seen a whole lot of earthquake activity out here. Some minimal movement, but it seems like when things stall out here, uh, the Hawaii area gets squeezed and uh, potentially further inflow of magma coming up from below increasing the pressure out here across the area it doesn't look like it's extending off towards the east rift zone um you know we'll have to watch if we start seeing some further swarming out here then that could be a good indicator that this may be a a bigger event than what uh what is expected but uh yeah, yeah. 448 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours goodness i want a total tally um, you know, and we're not going to get that, uh, with the USGS map here. So we'll continue to watch that. I'm going to check the, for an update just before I end this update video. Uh, like I say, they should have put out an update here to, uh, this morning, but, uh, it doesn't look like it's out yet. This was from two one with this time period UTC time. So that was last night. All right, uh, past two days, Kilauea Summit. Okay, so here's a summit. They, they definitely changed some stuff up here, it looks like. Uh, tilt meter, obviously, big time drop. Uh, so the magma has moved somewhere else, I believe, or found its way through the Southwest Rift Zone. I think it's been, you know, stuck there, building pressure, and finally found a, um, a dike area or intrusion area uh, towards the southwest rift zone here's the summit look at that and if you remember the past 30 days here on the graph these numbers uh, were not this large they were smaller numbers so this was a huge drop here yesterday and it's still dropping uh, from the summit area um, past month Kilauea summit in the east rift zone there's a gps over the last uh, couple months past five years still going up So I, I think uh, magma has found its way out here across the southwest rift zone and will continue to find its way towards the surface. All right, let's get back here to some earthquake activity outside of this region. And then we'll give a, like I said, we'll give another glance here at the update there if, if it becomes available. Uh, a couple of three or a couple three pointers out here today. Well, what, what do we got? A little decent swarm of activity out here around the... Uh, San Andreas Fault. Looks like that's off of this, the uh, creeping section here. That's a little bit of earthquake activity all at once. Um, some three. It looks like they had a three this morning, about nine o'clock or so, and a couple other threes here in the last hour. Fairly shallow. Again, just off of the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Not a whole lot else going on. Uh, yeah, definitely not a whole lot else going on here across Southern Cal. Got to watch it, though. Got one little earthquake, 1.5 outside the Salton Sea. A lot of rain coming in here. Picking up a lot of rain, lubricating some of these faults. You know, uh, last summer, um, they did have that um, tropical storm down here, right? Drop a lot of rain. I wasn't for, I'm wasn't. i not 100% certain if this was uh, dumped here on the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment. But uh, they've been getting quite a bit of rainfall out here across the west coast recently. And, uh, you know, put a whole bunch of rain down there. It takes a little while to lubricate some of these fault systems, but uh, it can lead to uh, some large earthquakes uh, if the uh, conditions are right and they get enough rainfall down there. So we continue to watch the rest co West Coast. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a handful of smaller earthquakes up here, it looks like. Um, some from yesterday, some from today. Let's go uh, double check the Yellowstone overview here. And it yeah, looks looks like um, that's about right. As far as uh, matching the uh, the time period here with 1900, sometimes these guys show the same data for days at a time. You got to check the time and date here. Make sure we're looking at the right one. This is up to the minute right here. Uh, earthquake activity very minimal there at Yellowstone. A handful of small microquakes, but. Uh, 
aside from that there's really not else uh, really not else to look at this activity out here looks like some type of outside interference it really doesn't look like earthquake activity to me far as this movement goes all right uh let's back out of here and go check out the rest of the country and world uh, Texas, the return of earthquake activity out in the Pecos, Texas region. That was just odd. There was no earthquake activity for a couple days there. Uh, 3.2 up into the Canada region. About 7 kilometers deep. Striking about 4 o'clock this morning. Not a big one, but a little, little earthquake activity up there. Uh, the Alaska region here. A handful of smaller quakes up through the Anchorage area. Really nothing major going on. And again, the western area of the Pacific Plate, quiet. I mean, in terms of, you know, typical movement, where's our huge clustering going on? Only a handful of smaller quakes there. 5.1 in the Mariana Trench area from last night. Uh, Three-pointer up there in the uh, northern Australia region. Here's some newer activity back building across the Tonga region here. Some very shallow earthquake activity. 10 o'clock this morning. And one from yesterday. They're a fairly deep earthquake. But uh, overall, looking at this, we look at these maps every single day. And this looks awfully quiet across the majority of the, you know, the Pacific Plate out here. So something's given. Something's got to give here pretty soon. Got Hawaii being squeezed out here in this hot spot region. Definitely uh, affecting the magma uh, flow, magma chamber below. Uh, in New Zealand, let's see, I think I've seen a little small earthquake down here across New Zealand area. Uh, maybe the Kermadec Trench here looks like a 3.7 uh, from this morning. Middle America Trench somewhat active out here. A couple fours and even a two-pointer stirring up right now. Uh, Iceland, what do we got up here? Ooh. Looks like a three-pointer coming in earlier so let's go double check and see what's going on up there across that region a little bit more active down here across the Grindavik area of Iceland today got about 36 earthquakes in total in the last 12 hours um, this area is another region here of potential as uh, far as the um, volcanic activity goes i want to see if there's been any updates put out here from the icelandic met office um yeah actually it was 2-1 the first day of february increased likelihood of an eruption so let's go ahead and check it out see what's going on here uh, models based on gps data reviewed this morning um indicate that approximately 6.5 million cubic meters of magma has accumulated beneath the Savart Singhi region. Goodness, <clears throat> that's a lot. Um, according to this assessment, magma will soon reach the same volume as drained during the January 24th uh, eruption here last month. So that could mean that uh, we're looking at a uh, possibility of an eruption here soon. Could be within two weeks or possibly days. This means that the likelihood of a magma intrusion and a volcanic eruption has increased now it looks like they have um, adjusted this map standby um, yeah it looks like they've adjusted this map here a little bit um, i'm going to go to the uh, other model here so we can see it a little bit better um, so zone three is going to be the area north of grindavik uh, back here in this region that's seen uh, the last two fissure eruptions back in uh, December up here. And then here's the most recent one in the 15th of January. Uh, of course, there's that little one that extended there into the north end of town. So zone three, sinkholes, eruptive fissures without warning. Uh, this here could be the main area where they're expecting more fissure activity to open up. Um, but... Uh, the trend that we've been following here has been kind of leaning towards the south here. I know Grindavik area uh, has seen uh, uh, elevated um, uh, inflation, GPS um, indication there that magma's flowing underneath the area. They got it in zone four. Uh, sinkholes, lava flow, earthquakes, fault movements. They don't show anything far as eruptive fissure activity here for now. So these guys look like they're um, believing that it will take place in this region. 
let's look at some right, let's go back here real quick and read what they have to say Uh, there is no absolute certainty that the warning time ahead of the next intrusion or eruption will be the same as January 14th, which was about five hours notice from the beginning of the earthquake swarm until the eruption began just south of the Hagefell area. Now, we did see that back in December and January as well. Uh, a large earthquake swarm. We're talking about hundreds of earthquakes just prior to the eruptive fissure activity opening up, similar to what you're seeing there in Hawaii. But this is a... Hawaii's got a, a different setup. Um, the warning period for the eruption uh, on December 18th was about 90 minutes. But either way, we'll see a lot of earthquake activity. Um, it is likely that the pathway for magma propagation uh, to the surface will be easier, resulting in less seismicity. Uh, that's because certain areas there uh, in the past magma flows have uh, solidified. Uh, we, we assess that the minimum warning time would be one hour ahead of a volcanic eruption and that the most likely pathway would be along the fissures from the magma intrusion on the 10th of November last year. So, yeah, it almost sounds like these guys are thinking that it's going to happen here within this red zone. That's That's the area marked, but there's still that potential there. I've seen fissure activity open up in Grindavik. Uh, the eight hour runtime here. Let me see, make sure these are working. Some of these were um, offline or not reporting data. Um, this is the Grindavik one that I've been kind of watching. It looks like they lost some of the data, but still the points here are going up in terms of the run uh we should be into february here not for sure if this is some older data but it shows here last data point two one right the first of february so if that's the case we still got uh elevated activity there across grindvik higher uh it's a higher area as far as the inflation goes the savart singi area in general see what we got here for this map here's the elevated inflation um and this was put out today right yep two one <clears throat> uh shows a little bit of leveling off but we're still above that region um in terms of you know previous uh eruptive eruptive activity uh so we're still definitely pressurized down there again earthquake activity we will witness it um, right before the eruption activity occurs uh, this right now just very minimal earthquake activity <clears throat> and when we did see when we did see that eruptive fissure activity here in january and uh, december this thing was just loaded with earthquake activity here hundreds so we should see that again that will give us a good indicator where that eruptive fissure activity is about ready to take place but uh uh, I still think it's around this region here south. But we'll continue to watch that and report on it. All right, uh, the rest of the earthquake activity out here. Well, man, we got California lighting up slightly. One up here across Mount, uh, well, Mount Shasta's way up north, but this is Shasta Lake. A little 2.0 coming in. Uh, really no, uh, no further activity in Northern California. I want to check the trimmer map here. Um... I don't think I checked it last night. 26 epicenters of Trimmer. They're across the Vancouver Island ranges, north of Victoria. Not a big deal. Still continuing that trend of very minimal Trimmer activity here since uh, our last decent Trimmer was back in October of 2022, right about here. All right, uh, what else we got here for any unusual earthquake activity? We got one way up here in Austria four-pointer coming in from yesterday uh, in in general the Mediterranean looks fairly quiet out here that three-pointer out here where was that on Iceland I didn't see that 
Maybe it's been over uh, Huh. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not not really seeing that three pointer. It's showing up here on the um, on the Earthquake 3D Glow, but uh, not so much. Maybe it's outside of the zone here of this map. So, all right. Uh, either way, I'll keep an eye on the activity right now. Hawaii, I think, is going to go soon. Um, I'll be surprised if it. Uh, goes another day without uh, some eruptive fissure activity let's check out the space weather activity here real quick a little bit a little bit calmer calmer it looks like uh, we do have numerous sunspots out here uh, the ones worth watching I guess or maybe this this area across this uh, region of the Sun here will be facing the earth here in a couple days a couple newer regional regional sunspots out in the, the uh, eastern limb that we're continuing to watch as well the overall threat right now looks to be about a 95% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25, X flare around 1% or so. <clears throat> and unfortunately, not a whole lot in the Aurora department. All right, far as weather goes, <clears throat> goodness, we do have a slight chance of thunderstorms out here. Hold on. You know, my, my voice kind of reminds me of that movie. <clears throat> we just watched it a couple days ago. I'm completely losing my voice. You know that movie? Um, oh, Bruce Almighty. That was a movie. It was a good movie. Me and Missy Mimi's uh, watched it again a couple nights ago. And in this scene here, the news anchor, Bruce uses his powers to make the news anchor have these weird sounds and loses his voice. That's just what... That's just what happened to me. So someone out there has a uh, some kind of powers to put the uh, the spell on me, so to speak. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? I'm still kind of getting over a little cold. All right. Uh, yeah. As far as earthquake activity goes, there's the West Coast. Got a little bit of a tail going on here across the four corners. We do have a slight chance of thunderstorm activity out here today. Um, and I was looking at the map. Uh, the radar predicted radar map here. I'll check that out uh, right now. There's our storm system out here uh, across the west coast. But I do want to check out the HR. Ooh, that one's not available. So I have to go back one run. Uh, but watch this line of activity here on the west. Uh, this daytime heating that we got right now is going to enhance some storms out here as that line of activity uh, comes through about four o'clock this afternoon. That does cover areas of Glen County, Tehama County, Calusa County, and all that area. <clears throat> all that that line of storms should be heading to Chico area uh, about five o'clock or so, six o'clock. So that's pretty decent. Hopefully, uh, you know, we'll see some thunderstorms out here. And then we got a well, we got another storm system back behind that. <clears throat> Uh, that's expected to run into the southern um, portion here of the state. Oh, that looks a little off here. Uh, that's a GFS model. This was showing more of a northern run, but looks like that's going to hit mainly uh, southern California, at least on this model. Let's see what we got here for the ECMWF. That's almost in agreement as well. Well, that's kind of a bummer. I was expecting a little bit more rain here. So it looks like we'll get some, but not a whole lot um, here in Northern California. Southern California, definitely. Looks like they'll get the brunt of the mo moisture. And um, after that, looks like a little dry period coming in um, for the West Coast after these little storms. But uh, colder air returning back to the center portion of the country. It looks like um, a good portion of February is going to be cold out here across the uh, lower 48. Uh, definitely looking at uh, some much colder temperatures. Fairly recent or fairly decent departure from normal temperatures there. I know right now kind of got that uh, high pressure building up here. Keeping things kind of warm, but that's not going to last long. It looks like it's going to be replaced by some colder air as we head further into the month of February. All right, real quick glance here at the um, 
Let's see if there's any more updates here. See if they put one out yet. Doesn't look like it. Still has the older update here from yesterday. Uh, again, we'll continue to watch it here, folks, and report back on anything uh, should the volcano uh, kick up, which I think uh, should be fairly soon. And again, I'm kind of leaning towards the area just to the southwest, south here of the caldera area along the southwest rift zone area for eruptive fissure activity. Kind of noticing that migration of activity down here. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Voice wants to work normal now for some reason. Not for sure why, but uh, all right, I got to get back to schoolwork and we'll catch you guys back out here later tonight. Or if something happens between then, we'll definitely jump on the live stream and do an update on this activity. Take care. Enjoy your Thursday. Oh, yeah. How many, but how many times do I have to push the button? That was five times. Something's going on in the air today.